We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. It's a spiritual combat. It's a spiritual combat. It's a spiritual combat. It's a spiritual combat. It's time to get into formation. We gotta get ready for the battle. So call on your brothers and sisters. We gotta turn back to the scriptures. Stop making it all about you. Them preachers, they got it confused. Come out of, come out of, come out of her. Cause Yahuwah is our deliverer. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Cause nobody's perfect. We're called by his name. We're called by his name. Seek him to be worthy. We should be coming together. There's power and unity. It's time to come into the order, cause we are a living prophecy. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. It's a spiritual combat, it's a spiritual combat, it's a spiritual combat, it's a spiritual combat. Lace up them boots, we gotta move step mode, put on camouflage. We gotta be wise, open your eyes to the most high in the skies. We must stop arguing, you when it's irrelevant. We must live in the Torah, it's heaven sent. He will put it in your heart, fulfilling the word of the new covenant. Don't be ashamed, don't be ashamed, cause nobody's perfect. We're called by his name, we're called by his name, seek him to be worthy. We should be coming together, there's power and unity. It's time to come into the order, cause we are a living prophecy. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against principalities, against power, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. It's a spiritual combat. It's a spiritual combat. It's a spiritual combat. It's a spiritual combat. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. It's a spiritual combat. It's a spiritual combat. It's a spiritual combat. Shalom, 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 y'all. It's Michael Israel. Of course, I ran into some technical difficulties, so I'm not going to be able to live stream this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to just upload it. Um, so we're recording. But anyway, uh, today I have Ron Dalton on, um, on the show today. And uh, what we're going to be discussing is... Um, Eric Mason, Dr. Eric Mason, his latest video he did, basically, I guess you could say calling himself uh, debunking the Hebrew Israelite um, belief, and uh, with that said, I'm going to bring Ron on. Shalom, Ron, how you doing? Shalom, shalom. <laughs> <laughs> like the video uh, man little spiritual yeah. combat video i threw in there but um yeah ron so uh you uh we talked earlier you uh you were saying you you got a chance to um to watch eric mason's video um what'd you think of it well uh i wasn't surprised i knew he was gonna i knew he was coming up with something uh, because he had uh, reached out to me <clears throat> on Instagram, and he told me that he had reached out to Ron Shields, and uh, and uh, I can't uh, tell you what he said because I got because Mike, you have all that information because he basically is uh, has been studying and watching what we're doing. So he's he's watching off to the distance, just like uh, Harry Rosenberg and. Vocab Malone and Eric Mason and others, they watch my page and they follow my page, lurks in my page and seeing what I'm posting and they don't say any comment. Every now and then they might comment something. Like Vocab Malone might comment something and then I usually say, well, if you want to uh, discuss this and debate this, come on the Spiritual Comment Show, the Hebrew Ego Show, and they usually get quiet. They never they never do. I don't know. Maybe they're just scared of something. <laughs> and uh, same thing with Rosenberg. He always lurks from the distance and doesn't say anything. Um, but uh, you know, uh, we've already debated Rosenberg, and we already destroyed him and put him in a coffin and sealed the deal. So Eric 
Mason is now somebody that uh, has been on the scene. Uh, he's kind of like the Apostle Paul. He's, he's kind of like the Apostle Paul that he Israelite, so the Christians. So he's the persecuting the the Israelites uh, and really trying to come up with ways that he Which can um, engage or get other pastors to engage mm -hmm. with this awakening and uh, and teach them how to deal with the Hebrew Israelites when they start coming with this truth and making black people start to think and ask questions because they don't want black people in church to ask questions and think. Uh, that's, the, that's the main thing that I used to do all the time, and that's why uh, my dad, who's a pastor, and other pastors, they would just get so fed up uh, when I would be in Bible class asking a million questions and they couldn't answer it. Uh, these are valid questions, and, and you know, we're, we're not, you know, I know sheep, a sheep is a dumb animal, and a sheep needs a shepherd, but uh, a lot of us, we're not, well, we're not, physical sheep were human beings and we deserve answers we deserve the truth and so when he uh came out to me called out to me he said uh you know I, I, he showed me a picture of, of my book and he said i'm going to dive into this book along with other hebrew books and i'm going to um uh let you know what i think and then he's going to get together uh i'm always going to get together a team or or some kind of game plan where they're going to study up all the hebrew books like my book and and rudolph windsor's from babylon temple two uh, Hebrews of West Africa. He, he might read Only Love's book, uh, and then figure out a way to combat the Hebrew Israelites. But uh, like I told him, I said, uh, I said, I said, I'm, I, my parents. Uh, I was raised in a Pentecostal apostolic uh, household, so uh, I, I understand the Holy Spirit very well, speaking in tongues as the Spirit, as the Spirit gets out of us, and I understand the baptism of, of water, uh, just like everything that was happening in, in the New Testament. And I said, we're not. We're not, I'm not teaching anything against that, you know. Uh, only thing I'm teaching is straight truth, and and and, and real fast, and and real fast, like what's their, what would you say their whole, like premise, like, uh, I when I listen to the video and I'm I'm gonna study it some more this evening because he he kind of made a big deal like this is gonna be the, the the uh, you know the big you know, hoorah, and they're going to really crush us or something. But it seemed like uh, what I've studied on his video so far, it seemed like a lot of his own philosophy and not fact. And, um, and it seemed like what they were trying to do was just say, hey, we're so desperate for an identity and, and for purpose that we made up a... Uh, uh, doctrine to make us feel better. You know, is that what you got when you, when you saw uh, his video? Yeah, the, I mean, one of the prop, part of the main problem is that we're going around saying that we're the real church in Israel, and, and he might say, well, uh, maybe some of you guys are, maybe a small, a small group, but you know, you can't just say that. You can't just go out there and say Negroes are the children of Israel and the people of Israel are not. Uh, that creates a big problem uh, in, in church because that throws everything off because, you know, he he uh, he will say that, of course he says salvation and the gospel of Christ is important, which it is important. Nobody's saying that. I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that it's not important. Uh, he's saying that history and all sort of stuff is, is, uh, is secondary, but then he says that, you know, we have linguistic fallacies and a miseducation historically, and like in, in that video, he was debunking uh, Deuteronomy 28. Uh, so he's basically trying, he's basically debunking the Bible because uh, he's trying to twist, he tried to twist the scriptures uh, using Joseph Flavius and other people that lived in the first and second century AD using the using the words of these men who are not even Israelites, and, and I can and I can prove that. I mean, some people might think jo Flavius Josephus or Joseph Flavius was a real Israelite, uh, but he was a Re Greco-Roman Gentile convert. And, uh, you know, so he's using works of those men, uh, of, of European convert men, to debunk uh, Deuteronomy 2868 when uh, it's very clear about the curse of Israel and what would happen to them when they transgress the law. And, and, and he's looking at it from uh, a Greek perspective because he likes to go into the Greek uh, meaning of a lot of things in the scriptures. Uh, he's not diving into the, uh, to the Paleo-Hebrew, which is a whole nother level that he hasn't uncovered because uh, he doesn't understand that the scriptures were first written in ancient Hebrew and ancient Hebrew is a uh, pictograph and each pic each letter 
uh, of the Hebrew alphabet has a meaning behind right. it. Right. And, and, and it's, a, it's a deeper level uh, when you go into that. And some may say it's even a deeper level when you go into the numerology, numerology of each letter of the Hebrew alphabet in regards to different words and, and the patterns of where, where different words appear in the Bible. Right. Uh, so, so he's, you know, he seems like a good brother. All right, Ron's Ron's phone's skipping a little bit, but yeah, it um the 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 fact is is uh I know he wanted I I think uh Eric uh Mason he wanted to wait till he does this lecture cuz I had reached out to him multiple times about coming on the show. Um but I know he he the show's important. It, hey, 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 uh Okay, so so Ron's phone broke up. Uh, he'll he'll be coming back in. Um, but yeah, I I had uh, there he is. He's back. All right, hold on. Let me let me bring you back in. Hold on, Ron. But uh, yeah, I reached out to Eric multiple times about coming on the show. I think he wanted to wait until after he does this lecture. Hopefully he would be willing to come on and not just come on and tap dance and use manipulation tactics to win, you know, like debate tactics, but come on and actually discuss the facts of how he's arrived at what he's, you know, the conclusion he's arrived at with this lesson he's done here. Because uh, like Ron was saying, man, a lot of these, well, you saw Harry when he came on here, man, Harry was just tap dancing and we about going directly with the facts not a bunch of philosophy not a bunch of i think or you probably but we about facts go ahead ron yeah so i don't know where i, where you, where I dropped off that but uh for instance if you ask any pastor uh say you say hey is the satan the father of lies he says yeah satan the father of lies because i mean there's no truth in him he comes to deceive the world the, the, one of the, the things that christ told the disciples about the, the signs of his coming, he said, let no man deceive you. And so it, it, we know in this time and age that Christ will forewarn us that we will be deceived. And so the biggest deception and hoax of all time, which I put in my, in my book, is that they've covered up who are the real sons of Abraham, who are the real children of Israel. Uh, I mean, even today, <laughs> when you look at the Arabs, the white Arabs, you're not looking at the real sons of Abraham. They, they may say that they're Israelites, but they're not the real Israelites. When you're looking at uh, the Jews in Israel, uh, now, 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 real fast, Ron. I got, I got to interrupt you there, real fast. I want those of you who are watching, Ron's. When Ron said that statement, Ron just said, and I want y'all to understand is any Ron, Ron don't come on here. Anything he that comes out of his mouth, he could back up anthropologically, archaeologically, historically, biblically, scientifically. He doesn't just ramble vain philosophies out of his mouth. He's on here, he's talking, he's saying stuff. If you want to DM him or contact him and have him back anything he says up with multiple layers from each of those areas. So it's not going to just be one DNA... Uh, way or one scientific way he's going to back it up. He's going to back it up with layers of information. And the problem we have with people like uh, Vocab Malone, uh, James White, um, uh, Harry Rosenberg is we'll back stuff up with layers of information. We'll back it up Hebraically and all through the Bible with tons of layers, but then when we hand it over to them, the back of what they're saying is the Harry Shuffle, it's tap dancing, it's uh, accusations, you're racist, but it's never facts, and that's the problem we got. And Bishop Eric Mason, I, I, I put this picture up here that I have up here right now, because look what he has up there. You see, You see what's up there on the desk with him? Those are our books. One of those books is Ron's books. He, it's a bunch of facts, factual books that we backed up with. Not emotionalism, not not Roman Catholicism, or nothing like that. It's factual books. 
and he's read them all. So it so it's like if you're gonna come on the show, I don't want to come on the show and you try to twist lines, words, and and do all these manipulations. See all those books his brother got up there? Hold on, let me put them up so y'all can see. You see all the books he has on stage with him, okay? So, so if you're gonna come on the show, don't come on the show and try to do uh, neuro NLP and psychological tricks to piss people off so you can feel right. We want facts, and we've yet to see them. And like I said, we're gonna study uh, what uh, uh, Dr. Eric Mason, um, what he's brought out and see if he got facts and if he's willing to come and stand on them facts. Go ahead, go ahead, Ron. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, uh... Yeah, so he, they don't want to, they don't want to address the truth. That's the problem. And and the main thing that I'm bringing out my book, Hebrews Negus, which which is making a lot of people, uh, a lot of Gentile nations upset. At least the ones that that really want to keep pushing this lie, right, like the Jews and, and maybe the Arabs, uh, is that that you know, the white people are the real children of Israel, and everything in the Bible is all white. I mean, even Palestinians, uh, when you talk telling them that Jesus wasn't white, Jesus is black, they say no, he was olive skin, he looked like an Arab. We're the real Jews. We're the real Philistines. We're the real Egyptians. We're, you know, they, they always want to claim something else. They're doing, they're doing what they say that we're doing, but we're actually preventing facts. And when you try to uh, explain this to them, because it, it, it is important that we understand the facts. Uh, like in Deuteronomy 28, uh, Deuteronomy 28 period, it talks about the blessings of the Israel. It said that we, should, that our children, that our children, our descendants will be scattered to the four corners, and there we should worship wood and stone. Now. That's, that's the key schedule. Like, well, why would they say wood and stone? Now, if you look at the Kaaba, the Kaaba stone. Before it was the Kaaba stone, the pre-Islamic Arabs, they worshipped the gem blocks, the gem blocks and Beitles, Beitles, B-A-E-T-Y-L-E-S. Now, these are stone blocks that they used to worship these pagan gods, these Islamic gods, well, not Islamic gods, but pagan Arabic gods, like Al-Uzza, al, al um, and Allah. Allah means uh, the god. It's just like Allah means the god. And Al Uzza means the mighty one, and Manat means the faith. And they had all these different gods like Sin and Hubal, Sin, the moon god, all this other stuff. Shamash, uh, or Shamash and Utu, the, the sun god, which is basically uh, based off the Roman Catholic Church in Babylonian Sumeria and sun worship. And when you look at these things, and you look at Christianity, the, the, the number one symbol for Christianity is the wooden cross. It's not a stone cross, it's a wooden cross. And so we're using the pagan, the Catholic Church has set up. Uh, graven images like the cross and and uh, a white Jesus that that we all have in our churches. The Bible doesn't say we're supposed to have a cross and a white Jesus in our church. Right. It doesn't say that. Right. Like, right. Christ didn't have none of that stuff. Even when even when Christ died and was resurrected and he risen and he and he showed himself before uh, the his disciples and his friends and he said he said uh, he said hail or behold or peace. And then when they when when they saw Christ risen. Uh, after he had died and resurrected, they bowed down. They worshipped him. Right. But they didn't. But right. Christ did say, "Use this cross, use this image of a white person, and and use this as a symbol of worship." They, it is, it, this, this is a clear example of how the scriptures in the Old Testament reveal what was going to happen. Because in any black church today, which has Hebrew Israelites in it, uh, or either any synagogue like the Nation of Islam, we're we're basically the things that we adorn are the Kaaba stone and Nation of Islam or Islamic. Uh, religion and the cross, or the or the white Jesus, and so he likes to debunk a lot of these things, like Deuteronomy 28, and then he likes to talk about uh, the fulfill. Uh, I didn't come to uh, do away with the law, but to fulfill the law, and he 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 uses the Greek, but then he doesn't understand. Like if you look at the Aramaic of, of fulfill, it's uh, Damala, D D M A L A, or in Hebrew it's Male, uh, and when you say fulfill, you got to be very careful because if you have a contract, if you have a bargain, if you have some kind of agreement, and you say, and you fulfill it, it is done. It's done. You, you don't have to come out to me saying, "Hey, man, you stole me some money. Hey, you stole me a payment. Hey, you owe me this." No, it's done. Right. Can I, right. He should. He should understand clearly that Christ was the goal of the Torah. Christ came to give full understanding of the Torah, uh, and the Torah was Christ. In the right. beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. What people don't understand is, is that Word. The word, that word, word in Hebrew is uh, davar, davar, d-a-b-a-r. That that word, word, it means davar. Right. And was is haya, uh, haya, which is almost like the tetragrammaton. So in Paleo Hebrew, and this is a lesson for him.
him, he can go back and research it. In particular Hebrew, Dabar is the Dalit, the Bet, and the Resh. The Dalit is the door or the doorway. The Bet is the house. The Resh is the highest, the mightiest, the leader, the prince, the king, or, or like God. So Christ is the door, doorway to the house of the Most High, of, of the king, of the father, the prince. Uh, and when you look at the, the word, even when you look at the word Torah, even you look at the word Torah, because Torah is like instruction. And right. people really understand that the commandments uh, that was that was given was, was actually Abraham was following the commandments, statutes, and law. Uh, right. If you look at the scriptures in Genesis, right. and the covenant was given with him, then it was passed down to Isaac and his descendants, and his descendants from his descendants the whole nations of the earth will be blessed by him, and then to okay. Jacob and his seed. So when you look at the Torah, you'll see that you have the tav for the t, you have. Uh, you have the, the, the Va, which is the U, you have the Resh, which is the R, and you have the He, which is the A. So this is the deepest thing. This is so, this is so deep. So the top is, is basically two cross sticks. So it's two cross sticks like an X. And it signifies a mark, a sign, a covenant. And when you have the Va, it's, it's, or, the, or the U pronunciation, you have uh, secure or bind. A secure or, or bind or to fasten. And when you look at the Resh, Again, we have the highest, the highest position, the leader, the king, the prince, um, the head of a man. And then with the hey, you have behold, look, reveal, or what, what's coming. Because in Peter Hebrew, it's a, it's a person looking up. So when you, when you go through that, you'll see that the covenant or the cross secures or binds the high priest, or not the high priest, but the most high or the father at the beginning, uh, behold and look. But then if you look at the other way around, you look at from backwards, you say, Behold, behold, the the the, the 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 highest, the king, the prince, the man, secured, bind on the cross. I'm gonna say it again. You're gonna have at the end. You have the the hey, behold, reveal, look, man, or the head, the leader, the highest, bind, secured, or fastened, cross, covenant, sign. So either way you go, the Torah, you know, when Christ says, I, I come not to do away with the law uh, or to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law, Christ was the law. Christ is the goal of the law. Just like Christ said, uh, you search the scriptures, look at return eternal life, but the scriptures all point to me, meaning the Torah. And if I gave Moses the scriptures, if you didn't understand what I gave Moses, how you understand what I'm telling you right now? Right. So, you know, the whole thing, the whole thing basically, we're not trying to, we don't say, like, at least when I teach, I say, look, I say, Christ gave us two greatest commandments. Uh, love the Lord with all your heart, heart, mind, soul, and body, uh, and then love your brother just like yourself. If you, if we really as a people did all of that, then we would really kind of like encompass and start to shift the curses of Israel uh, to receive the blessing of Israel. But, you know, in my, in my thing, you know, he, this is the thing for him. He cannot defeat the truth. He cannot debunk the truth because the truth doesn't go away just because you don't believe it. The truth doesn't change because you don't believe it. And one of the things that that I talk about in my books is straight truth. Uh, and like I asked Harry Rosenberg and I asked any pastor, I say, the sons of Ham, the land of Ham is Africa, right? And they say, yes. So that means that the indigenous people of Africa are the Kushites, the Canaanites, the Mitraim, or the Egyptians, and the Putites. What do the people of Africa look like today? They're black. They have woolly hair. So if the Kushites or the Nilots or the Nilots, Nilots of hair, the Kushite people in the Horn of Africa, in Northeast Africa, they, they're black. They have woolly hair. They speak the Kushitic language, uh, Mesosemitic language. They speak uh, 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 Egyptian tongue in their language as well, such as the Somalians and the Beja, other people, the Maasai. And if you look at uh, the Canaanites, the Canaanites were brothers of the Kushites. And the Egyptians and the Canaanites should also be black too. It shouldn't have a white Canaanite and black and black brothers and sisters. It doesn't make any sense. The same thing with the Libyan Putite Beverage. So when we look at the Bible, the children of Israel intermarried and had children with the sons of Ham for over over a thousand years. It, 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 it was listed in the book of Ju uh, Judges around 1300 BC. It's look, look, listed in the book of Ezra around 400 500 BC. That's, that's over a thousand years of intermarriage and having children with the people in Africa. So a lot of times we, Eric Mason doesn't use common sense and critical thinking. And when you look at, and I talk about this in my books and my movie, and this is the reason why the people that he had in his audience uh, at that 
conference, whatever, engaging the Hebrew Israelites, they need to pay attention to real facts. Today, the Semitic languages, uh, the languages that most clearly link up and are identical or similar or are contemporary to the ancient Assyrian Babylonian linear Elamite script, is the Indus Valley languages in India, in North India, Central India, South India, Sri Lanka, and beyond. Anybody, any linguistic scholar can understand Chinoform script and Sanskrit, Wedge Sanskrit, and, and do the connections because the ancient Assyrians or Ashur, the ancient Babylonians or Afarxad, and the ancient Elamites, which is all three of the sons of Shem, they all were Semitic people. This is partly based off of uh, where Hebrew comes from. And when you look at the languages in, in, in Tamil Nadu or Tamil or Malayalam or Kerala in Kerala, India, you'll see all types of Babylonian, Hebrew, Assyrian, um, Assyrian, Aramaic, uh, Elamite influences in their language today, even their ancient uh, languages of the Harappan script, uh, the Ascoan, Tamil script, Brahmi script, uh, Telugu, Kannada, all these different scripts. But, you know, the, thing, the sad thing is, is that, that he's not ready for true yeah. scholarship, true, true Israelites or true scholarship. Exactly. He could, try his, he could try his best, but at the end of the day, this is why Vocab Malone, uh, Harry Rosenberg, and Kuden Eric Mason, they don't want, they don't want to come and, and, and discuss the debate with Hebrews with true scholarship. They don't want to do that. They, right. They're just going to keep talking about fulfill the law, Deuteronomy 28, Egypt, and a whole other stuff. You know, to try to confuse black Christians to say, hey, these Hebrew Israelites are crazy, they're a cult, look at how they're twisting the scriptures, here's how you can Yeah, and that, and, that, and that's the thing that when you, uh, that's my key point, that's what I hear as soon as these people start doing their thing, they're never addressing the points we're making, they're just saying, that all they're saying is surface stuff, hey, uh, you know, um, but they won't get down and address the facts that we're bringing out. So what I got here is uh, the discourse, the discussion you and Eric had on Instagram that you sent me. And uh, it says, it says, I've seen some of your stuff and have heard a ton of arguments again, again, maybe he meant against nationality and secondary, but the gospel is of first importance. And that's you right now, right, Ron? Yeah. Well, yeah, everything I sent you was what he said. Okay, and then it says, um, but the truth is important. That's what I teach. If I ask you... Oh, yeah, you, that's me. That's me. Okay. So, yeah, so uh, he, you wrote up, but the truth is important. That's what I teach. If I ask you a yes or no question, is the truth important? And does God want us to tell the truth? And that, that's what I'm saying. What needs to happen here is we don't need to have a discussion with all this manipulation. You watch some of these people who they're studied in debate. So they're not, and, and, and these people who are studied up like Vocab Malone and them, they're just studied in winning little arguments and looking right, but it's not about bringing truth out. And that's, it's like when we, it, the one time I had somebody from the Shield Squad on the show, it was more about little verbal judo manipulation tactics it was more about that than bringing the truth out. And you yeah. watch a lot of these so-called Christian apologists. That's all they're doing. They're not really getting to the facts. These me, folks, just... and if you listen to Eric Mason's lecture, what I heard so far was not facts. Just, oh, they do. Why we're doing it. We're doing this because they, they just need an identity because they feel a void and all this stuff like that but never getting down and addressing facts. And that's what Ron let me, does. Go ahead, Ron. Let me, let me tell you why this is, this, this is why our, our life and the future of what's coming on this earth depends on us knowing the truth. Why else would Christ say, why else would Christ say let no man deceive you? Deception means that somebody's lying to you. And, and in the Bible, in Revelation, it says that Satan deceived the whole world. And he also says, if any man, any man adds, adds or takes away from, the, from, from this book, he'll take away from the, from the book of life. So 
it was already foreswritten that, that Satan was going to do all this stuff. We just keep keep pushing lies when we just start incorporating truth. Now, this is why it's important. If if we're looking at the, the Jews in Israel to be the real Jews, when in all factual reality they're actually Gog and Magog, then that's a huge that's a huge blow. It's a huge problem because then we have to look at the scripture and say, well, Ezekiel 38, it says Gog and Magog is going to come against the children of Israel. If you look at uh, even if you look at the Confederate, uh, who was the Confederate against Israel? Um, that came against Israel, the Tabernacles of Edom. So Tabernacles means like a conglomerate, like 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 the whole Edomite clan. And then you look at the Ishmaelites, the Hagarim, uh, the, the 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 Moabites, the Ammonites. Uh, Ashur is with them, and he helping the children of Lot. You know, all these all these people are if they are considered against the, the hidden ones, the children of Israel, then we need to truly identify who these people are. Who are the Edomites today? Who are the Ishmaelites, the true Ishmaelites today? Or wh where has the Ishmaelite bloodline been passed along to? Including Ashur. Nobody talks about who Ashur is. Who are the Assyrians and the Babylonians of right. the ancient days? And, and when you talk about Torgomov, uh prophesy against uh, a, a, a prince, a prince Rosh, Meshach, Gog, Magog, nobody's teaching these things. And if we can prove that the Ashkenazi Jews, the Sephardic Jews, the Turks, the Kurds, the current white Arabs today, that they actually descend from Central Asia, from Gog and Magog, and we can prove that the people in China, in North China, also descended from Gomer and Magog and his band. And we can prove Russia and a lot of these other countries are also lineages of Japheth, whether they're from Gog and Magog or uh, Madai or Javid, Javid or Tyrus or, or Meshach, any of these, these children of David, then we know anti biblical prophecy. At least we can interpret it better. And that's why it's so important. And this is what I use in the books. We use DNA, why DNA have a groups, Mortal DNA have a groups, autosomal DNA uh, uh, studies, certain genetic markers that can be found in certain people. Uh, uh, we use um, uh, math like we said, index scores. We, I use, basically, I use even the samples of your hair. Yeah, you can find a lot, of, a lot about people's hair texture and what makes their hair a certain way, what color, what texture, uh, what thickness. Even when you look at the jaw, the jaw analysis of the maxilla, the mandible, when you look at the nasal crest, the angles of the face, when you look at the archaeological proof, when you look at the anthropological proof of, of people's traditions and customs of their culture, when you look at ABO blood groups, when you look at infectious disease, thalassemia, uh, sickle cell anemia, malaria, look at all these different G6PD deficiency, look at the, all the diseases the Ashkenazi Jews have, linguistic analysis of the, the, the Eurasian steppes, the, the, up, the steppes from the Western Europe, Eastern Europe, the Volga, the Ural Mountains, the Aral Sea, the Caspian Sea, see the Khazar, the Black Sea, the Ukraine, Kiev, Rus, Khazaria, Scythia, Sumerian, Civil Martian, Samartian, Bactria, all these different people. I'm just going on a rant. You can tell who are the real people. I mean, right. I mean and real and no real just... and real fast. So you like because I could let Ron go and he would just he would go through all the it literally it's multi-dimensional. Any what what some of these he what the Hebrew scholars have done that we're dealing with here, these ain't these ain't just your typical bruise that you jump you, you know that people like to point fingers at. These Ron Ron you got Ron Dalton, Ron Shields, you got Badadiah, you got a lot of other brothers that people like Eric Mason, people like um uh Vocab Malone and uh David, I, I forget the other guy, James Dave, White or whatever his name Dave is. They, they've purposely and strategically avoided it. As a matter of fact, Ron Shields called in to his show and he cut him short because Ron asked him one simple question. They don't want this. They don't have anything for it. Now, let me read what Eric Mason wrote now because I'm going you know, to be balanced with it. But he wrote... To Ron, he wrote, I hear you. Now, let me tell you this. I have a team of 20 people minimum that does this for a living. Mainstream scholars ignore stuff like you presented, but we don't. We're not your run-of-the-mill Christians. When someone is true and honest, we admit that. But if your sources are lacking, and it's pseudo, we expose it. Are you ready for it? 
I'm going to go through everything with a fine tooth comb, you and any other high level Israelite from genetics to history and the ancient texts. We got that in writing. So like I said, it's, it's in writing. Like I said, when he's, when you ready to come on, bring them all on. I could have up to a hundred people on this show. So if you want to bring 20 of your best, we'll get our best and we could do it live. And, and on the spot, no tap dancing, no shucking and jiving, no cooning. Just facts and bring it out. But, but what we're saying here is we don't see it. Like every time somebody said they're going to do something big, like it's just a bunch of tap dancing and hearsay and nobody want to bring the facts. The, yeah, the Hebrew yeah. Israelite got facts. Go yeah. ahead, Ron. See, he don't see he. Eric Mason, he he's a, he has all these degrees in theology, and he's an apologetic. But I, he don't he don't have a degree in in sciences. He doesn't degree a medical degree in like what I what I went to school for. So I took biochemistry. I took microbiology. I took uh, genetics. And I took statistics and, and calculus and this and that. And I took uh, all types of biological chemistry classes. And so so for me, studying all this DNA stuff. With uh, with with RNA, DNA, STRs, SMPs, SNPs, uh, base nucleotide pairs, you know, alleles, loci, all these different things, it all makes sense when I when I read it because I, cause right. I have a source I, I, I that's trained for this kind of stuff. And, and real, this, hey, this, and real fast, he he said he has twenty people. I'm thinking of five people that would just crush everything, and and that'd be you, Howard. Um, Bedadiah. So you got Howard, who got the theological side <laughs> understood. You got you, who got the medical and, and, and the DNA and all that. You got Bedadiah, who got the scholarly and the writings. You got um, uh, uh, Ron Shields. So it's like, I mean, but like I said, I'm watching and I'm up, I'm observing. I'm watching his lecture. I'm gonna study his lecture out and see what he's coming with. But I'm gonna be honest, Ron. You let me know what you think. But I I don't think they're gonna come on this show. I've been, I've been trying to get Eric Mason to come on this show for months now, and he yeah, been I, I could like, show you the texts he he gave me back. You know, yeah. so I don't I I really don't think he really wanted. I just think he's trying to preserve and keep his his uh the the thing he created there his uh epiphany is it a what's the name of his organization i think he's epiphany, just epiphany fellowship or something like that yeah but i'd love yeah, for we'll, them we'll to come start, on and we we'll, put the facts on the table yeah you know i mean the bottom line is that they don't divide well not divide but vocab malone harry rosenberg eric eric mason woke church they don't they don't want. They don't want this. Basically, I mean, come on. If you look realistically, me and Benaya alone can destroy and dismantle the Sephardic Jewish history that they've been that they've been regurgitating and giving us all these years. And you know, I have done extensive research on the Ashkenazi Jews and the Khazars in Central Asia. I mean, I, I lately I've been living in Central Asia. This is basically it's a book just studying the Turkish languages, the Turkish languages, and and Genghis Khan and Attila the Hun, and a lot of. A lot of Russians know about this, the cognates, the different kingdoms, and Rus and Scandinavians. They know about Siberians, the Mongoloid people. Yeah, that they all and, used to have and, back in the and run real fast. Like with 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 people like Mason and these other people who are trying to talk against us. What they don't realize is we've tried harder than them to disprove what we believe, but it just grounds you in it deeper. I mean, you you just got to be stubborn to go against it. Yeah, they, they, they have no clue what Elamo, Dravidian uh, language is. They don't know how, no clue what linear Elamite, cuneiform Assyrian script. They have no clue about the different Indus Valley languages, about Madai being half, Madai kingdom being half uh, Japhetic and half, uh, half Semitic, if you read, if you read the, lost, the lost script. And so you look at the people in India, you look at Afghanistan, Pakistan, you look at Persia or Medes or Iran, you will see a lot of this stuff in the people's DNA and their language and their traditions and customs, even their even their religion with the Hindu Vedic text and the Sumerian the Sumerian tablets of NK, all these different things, 
they haven't studied none of this stuff. They're, they're, they're like, they're like babies. You know, they're like babies. They're, they're coming against giants and lions. You know, they, they like, they, you can't come into an ocean with full of sharks and you're just a little goldfish. You can't do it. I mean, I, mean, I don't care. I, I don't care how much scripture he knows in the New Testament. What, we're, what I'm trying to tell you is the truth. The true, true uh, of biblical history of the Old Testament needs to be presented with facts because, you know, you have the black Arabs and you have the white Arabs. Who are the original Arabs? Well, somebody, somebody's not the original Arabs. We know that a white Arab can't, over time, mutate into a black Arab. And no matter how much sunlight he gets in Arabia or Egypt or Palestine, he's never going to turn into a black Arab that looks Negroid. He's never going to do it. So the DNA and linguistic, the traditions and customs, the oral history, all these things can point to who are the real, like I said, sons of Abraham, the sons of Isaac, the sons of Jacob. And this is all important because the covenant was given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And also, if you look at the prophecies of the end times, you'll see who are the confederate is, who right. are the Gog and Magog. Right. You know, who are going to possess Jerusalem until the time of Christ's second second coming. Right. And, and the Gentile mystery, the people are, are constantly talking about Gentiles, Gentiles, black people are Gentiles, Gentiles. If black people are Gentiles, then according to Luke 21, 24, that we should have trodden down Jerusalem and possessed Jerusalem until Christ comes back. If you really want to be honest, if, if black people are the Gentiles or the nations of the Gentiles, then everybody in the world would just have their free will in controlling Jerusalem until the time of the Messiah. But actually, black people are not controlling Jerusalem and Israel. And, and that's not going to happen until it's time. So, you know, they just, like you said, they pick and choose scriptures, they twist things around. Uh, they they don't address real history, which, right. which is what I do. So, and that, so I don't think they're hey, ready for it. So, so Ron, so in conclusion and wrapping this up, if, if Bishop, uh, or I'm sorry, if Dr. Eric Mason, if he sees this, what would, what do you want him to know? What, what do you want to tell him? Uh, that he needs to stop. See, he's not, he's not yielding and obeying the Holy Spirit. If he has the Holy Spirit, because I don't know what he believes in. I don't know if he's been filled with the Holy Spirit or not. Uh, but if you were yielded to the Holy Spirit and abided by the Holy Spirit, then you're not going to go against truth. And the Most High, for a lot of us, has been, a lot of uh, blacks have been revealing this truth. A lot of times we will just pray to the Most High and say, show me the truth. I'm tired of all this deception. Because as you, as you go on the Internet, you look at things on TV and the media and the news, you're like, man, we live in a world of deception. And, and you start to look at different things like the Jews and the white Arabs and the black Arabs. You're like, man, what is going on here? Uh, tell me the truth. Because there's a lot of things that are deceiving people, uh, like the Flavian dynasty, the Marcion, all this other stuff, and, and Egyptian, Egyptian, Kemetic uh, philosophy and doctrine. And so a lot of black people are asking God in prayers, please show me the truth. God's answering their prayer. God's answering their prayers. It's not just, uh, just people in general. It's pastors and ministers are waking up, and these people are yielding to the truth. They're yielding to the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit reveals all things, and it teaches and guides you. Pastor Eric Mason is like going against the grain. Uh, he's going to get the grain of the truth, and he needs to stop being scared of uh, this Hebrew awakening. He needs to embrace it. And actually, if you read a lot of my books, watches the movie, really studies deeply, he'll understand that what I'm saying is all valid and true. And, uh, and, and, and he yeah, might and a Hebrew, a Hebrew, a Hebrew uh, Pentecostal, Hebrew Apostolic, Hebrew Baptist, whatever, whatever he wants to call himself. But and I'm a Hebrew. And, and I'm, I'm going to tell you if. if for for the all y'all watching, I the if you want a a quick way to know if somebody's really about what they talking about is they willing to sit there sword against sword and and be about it and talk about it on live on the air in front of everybody. They're not gonna have some pre recorded thing behind the scenes or anything like that. They gonna they gonna go against whoever's challenging what they're saying, but I'm telling you, there's just there's a lot of tap dancing and big talk out there. But when it comes down to uh, you know being that being about that action, these folks ain't about that action. So, like I said, we're gonna see with with uh, Eric Mason. Um, we're going to see if he going to really stand on what he's claiming he has. Um, like I said, I've been reaching out to this dude for almost six months now. Really got a bunch of, I, I've got a runaround, got ignored. Same thing with Ron. 
Um, so we're gonna see if he's willing to. Mark, go ahead, go ahead, Ron. But Mike, this this is what this is what he ain't gonna do. Uh, because he he he's like a he has like a brick wall up. Like a lot of our uh past, our, our parents who are pastors and ministers and missionaries, he is not. And I and I can prove this. Uh, just simply Old Testament history. We don't have to just we don't have to talk about doctrine because doctrine is up, up to your own personal interpretation of how you want to twist the scriptures, which a lot of people do all the time. That's why you have so many people teaching different doctrines. But what he ain't, what he's not going to do is go in front of his church, uh, whether he has one church, two churches, or three churches, and say, I've done the research, I've studied the books, black people or Negroes are the real children of Israel, and the people in Israel call themselves Jews, the Ashkenazi and Sephardic Jews are not the real Israelites. They're descendants of Jacob's lineage through uh, different different uh, lineages, including Gog and Magog, and some a mixture of Edom. And he, if he goes and say, well, the Arabs too, uh, there's black Arabs and white Arabs, the black Arabs are the real ones, and the white ones are invaders. And I mean, he's not going to go there and, and drop that huge blow and say, you're not Gentiles, you're not Canaanites, you're not Egyptians, you're the real Israelites. Uh, and the people of Israel are not the real Israelites. Because once you say that, and they say, wait a minute now, how is that possible that the people of Israel right now are not the real bloodline descendants of the children of Israel? That shakes up the whole Bible. Now you got to go back and reread the whole Bible now, inserting the proper people in their positions. Because you know there are people existing to this day on the earth. Everybody on the planet Earth are descendants of Noah's three sons, and they're downstream. So that that includes the children of Israel, Gog and Magog, Assyria, Persia, Ethiopia. Put all these people are in the Bible. You know, Libya, Persia, all this stuff is in the Bible, and it's and it's all, and it's, they're listing the Bible as key figures in end times biblical prophecy. So you got to switch everything up now once the once the players have been changed, and you now know the truth. But he's not going to do that so that his congregation can know the truth. He's going to keep promoting this lie that uh, that he's doing, and he's going to use scriptures to back it up and say that he rules life for state. Yeah, but uh, well, see, my my thing, and, and what I'm I'm telling y'all who are watching, um, Ron, I, I know Ron Dalton, I know uh, Doctor Howard, uh, Ron Shields, um, Brother Badadiah. I know all these brothers are willing at the drop of a dime to, to, to go anywhere in front of anybody and let them pick this apart. And and they'll stand there. They'll, they'll take any challenge. You know, it's not a fight, but they'll take any challenge to discuss or debate what they believe and why and bring the facts out. What we're seeing with a lot of these people who claim to, oh, yeah, we're going to debunk this. They don't. They don't want to jump in the fire and 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 uh, you know have it tested. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to really. It's just all talk. You know. No. I'll let, hey, let me tell. You, let me tell. You, let me just tell him this, so he he knows who, where I stand, because he likes to he likes to group all the Hebrews like into one big pot. But you gotta you got you gotta teach your people the right thing because everybody doesn't have the same doctrine. For for instance. Me, I believe in the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues and, and water baptism. Just like the Bible says, I believe in the Messiah, Yeshua, HaMashiach, the world called Jesus Christ. I believe that the Gentiles can be saved. That's the whole reason for, for Christ's coming. And I believe that through Israel, we will be a light to the nation. Because right now, the world is corrupt right now. You know, right. At, at, this, at this current moment, now that this truth is coming out, we are really sticking to what is uh, a, a lawful, not unrighteous and sinful. Because right now, the world is operating in sin. Then two, I don't believe that the whole white race on the planet Earth is are e Edomites. That, that's, not, that's, that's absurd. That's nonsense. And I believe in the virgin birth. And I believe, I, pretty much, if I was raised in the Pentecostal Apostolic Church, I still believe in the foundations that they teach in terms of doctrine. I just know the truth now of who's who in the Bible and in, in biblical history in the Old Testament, but they don't teach you. You don't teach any of this stuff. And they don't dive into the to the... To the revelation of ancient Hebrew in regards to Christ and the feast days or any of that stuff, or the uh, New Testament being written in Aramaic first and then translated to Greek and Old English and Latin, all this stuff. They don't teach any of this stuff. So he has to stop grouping all the Hebrew Israelites as the cult, and, and we're all the same way. We don't believe in Christ. We don't believe John the Day. We believe the white man's the devil. We believe that the Edomites are the white man. We, we don't believe in the virgin birth. We believe in this. So that he's, he's making it bad for a lot of uh, good. Hebrews that that are that came out of the Christian church and that they just come they just want truth that's all they want I just want truth and right. they want to operate in spirit of truth and so that's what I'm doing with my books 
in my movie, and it ain't gonna stop. And like you said, Mike, I don't think he's gonna want to come on the show and and talk about this vocab, Harry Rosenberg, whoever. So yeah, uh, James White or what's the guy's name? James White or something like that. James White. But and, and I I kind of I I've seen I I've I've watched how they debate and how these Christian apologists are, and literally, they're just in a thing where they're trying to it's verbal judo and that they're, they're using all these word and these verbal words. tricks and no truths coming out they're just trying to win little arguments and and yeah. no truth comes mumbo out jumbo. yeah so it, yeah, it, it, it can be jumbo. frustrating but like i said uh, uh they're all welcome reach out to me i'm easy to get in contact with my email's right on the screen they're all welcome to come on spiritual combat but I've just seen a lot of uh, fear, you know, because, you know, they know that you know, they, they look at Ron as the big bad wolf blowing their little house well, down. <laughs> well, he, actually, he, actually, he actually did me a favor by showing my book in front of everybody. So hopefully when he shows my book in front of the churches and says, uh, this guy right here, Ron Dole wrote a book in Hebrews and Negroes, you know, hopefully the church will be like, let me, let me read that book. Because when they read <laughs> that book, they're going to wake up. They're going to wake up and ask him questions. So he's actually doing me a favor by promoting the book. Right. right. So, uh, so yeah, uh, Dr. Mason, if you're watching, like I said, you know, I've been in contact with you, been in contact with your assistant, and he's he's pretty cool. Uh, you know, I've talked to him on the phone a bunch of times. Uh, you sent me that message and messenger saying, "Oh, you already talked to Ron, and y'all done already worked something out." Which what what was he? I guess he was talking about y'all were talking on on. Uh, on Instagram or whatever. Yeah, yeah, so anyway, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a hard person to reach. Like I said, like I, I, I commented on his video and I left my email. I mean, if he really wants to contact me, just like Vocab Malone and Harry Rosenberg, they, they got my number, they got my email, they can contact me. Right. Uh, and, 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 and you guys, you guys will see down the line if that really happened, then you'll see us on the, on the spiritual combat show. Right, and I, and I'm telling you to date. I haven't seen any of these people. I mean, you saw what happened when um, Vocab Malone crossed Ron Shields the wrong way that one time uh, on uh, it was it was on the phone, and you know it was a, a chop shop. And I haven't seen any of these people try to step to Ron to date. Hey, hey, tell it, and even that that rabbi uh, Jews for Karaite Judaism, like you know, I. I they call it. They calling us out. You know, Hebrew Negroes. Yeah, and, real fast. Uh, yeah, I, if any of y'all, hold on, let me pull that up real quick. Cause I need y'all. If any, if y'all are watching, I need y'all's help on this finding out who this dude is. Uh, let me pull it up. Rabbi, go, rabbi, go ahead, Ron. Rabbi, go ahead and talk. Yeah, the rabbis are upset, man. A lot of you see a lot of Jews are watching. A lot of Arabs are watching this. Uh, our, our YouTube channels. Uh, Hebrew, Hebrew, Negro TV, Moses Levi. Uh, and they're they're secretly watching. They may they may comment every now and then, but they may not comment on on our channels. But they go on their channel and start start saying making videos and stuff. And we don't know about these videos unless somebody tags us. And so these rabbis, man, they they say all this stuff. But then when you when you comment and say, let's talk about it on the Hebrew Singles Podcast Show. Let's go on the Spiritual Combat Show. Here's my email. Here's my phone number. They don't do it. And and, and the thing is. They know they know what type of scholarship we're bringing. That's why they, they want to keep saying it's trash. You guys are Kushites. You guys are Egyptians. You guys are mixed mixed breed people or Europeans. You know all types of hate and trash because we're speaking the truth. Like Paul says, "Am I your enemy because I speak the truth?" They don't like truth. That's the problem. And yeah. it's a, it, this truth is a threat to Islam, Judaism, and Roman Catholicism and Christianity. Right. Right. Yeah, let me see if I can find this. I want y'all, if any of y'all know how to get in contact with this dude. Uh... <laughs> everybody, everybody. <laughs> and Ron, uh, you, you, uh, can, know, you can, know, it's a hot topic. It's a hot topic because that video he did about uh, debunking the black Hebrew Israelites had the most views out of all his videos. So his followers are really interested in that topic because. If they weren't, then a lot of those people and maybe other people wouldn't have been interested in that video that he did in, in regards to debunking the Hebrew Israelites. He did like a three-hour-long video on it. Mm. This is how they, they go through extensive 
time to make videos about engaging Hebrew Israelites, debunking Hebrew Israelites because they're scared of the truth. That's what it all boils down to. Yeah, and and all the statements are, you're racist, you're doing this, you're doing that, but they never address the facts. So like I said, we'll be studying up on Eric Mason's video tonight because he he talked this thing up very well to where I was like, okay, maybe he's going to come with something I haven't heard. So we're going to see. Um, but what I'm trying to find... Okay, uh, Ron, say that guy's name again, though. It's Jews for... Was, uh, Jews, Jews for Karaite, uh, Judaism, K-A-R-A-I-T-E, Judaism. It, yeah. Jews, it, Jews for Karaite, Judaism. And let me let me see if I, I can pull... Spell that again. Jews for Karaite, K-A-R-A-I-T-E, Judaism. Let me see. All right, so here we go. I got I got his page. I'm gonna pull it up. If any y'all know who this guy is, tell him he's welcome to come on to the Spiritual Combat Show. And 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 just just cause the name might sound a little aggressive, don't think you know we're gonna it's gonna be real combat or anything. But you know, don't get it twisted. But we want he he said a matter of fact, I pulled a show up where he calls Ron out. And says he's false and all this stuff. Let me see if I can find it here. But all, but so what's happening is is that all of this truth coming out, uh, Gentiles, Arabs, Jews, Black Christians, is creating doubt. They're, they're starting to doubt what their pastors or their, or their rabbis have been teaching them. And so you got people that go to the synagogue saying, "Hey, when we've been watching these videos, and, and these Black people are putting up strong evidence to prove that they're the real Jews, and we're just." You know, Central Asian Turks and 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 Khazars and Mongols and descendants of Gog and Magog, and, and and the rabbis have to deal with this because they don't know how else to deal with this because this, uh, they're they're going to start losing members too and people to the faith. People people are going to probably a lot of the people the rap a lot of the Jewish people are going to start becoming messianic because they're they're going to start seeing that the whole Torah in ancient Hebrew uh, leads to Christ to the Messiah. Even the feast days that they celebrate all points to Christ. And when you start breaking this stuff down. It's, it's, it's very dangerous uh, to Islam, Talmudic, Judaism, and black uh, black Christianity. Uh, and that's why there's, they're, they're putting up such much, so much training and effort into these videos to try to debunk and make the Hebrew Israelite awakening look bad. And, and the, the thing is, a movement usually is, 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 uh, is, is, is led by one person, like Martin Luther King, uh, Malcolm X, Huey Newton, Marcus Garvey, you can you can assassinate and get rid of, of one person that's leading a movement, but this is an awakening. Everybody, all black, a lot of black people are coming out with tons of channels about who we are: Benaya, Seed of Israel, Big Judah, Hebrew Nation, Bitter Birth of Nation, uh, Only Love, Moses Levi. So you got all types of socialite, media lights, documentaries, books, DVDs, things that are coming out, just proving who we are. And this is what the Bible prophesied the last days. You right. Know, so, you know, they can't stop it. That's all I got. So, so if any of y'all know this dude here, that, with this website here, I, uh, just let him know, hey, yeah, come on the show, man. We get it. You know, it ain't going to be a bunch of shouting and yelling and all that. It's just going to be facts. Ain't, ain't nobody going to be getting emotional unless you do, you know. But uh, uh, yeah, we, we'll, keep, we'll keep it at. Yes or no, answer the question. True or false, answer the question. You know, we keep, we like, keep like, it. Like I did with Rosenberg. Exactly. But if, if y'all know this dude, uh, give me his contact information. My email's right there on the screen. Or have him get in contact with me. He could email me or whatever. And we could, I mean, he's bold. He said he could debunk Ron. I, I couldn't find the video, but he has a video calling out Hebrews and Negroes. Um, let's, let's do it. Let's, let's get the facts on the table. Okay. Uh, let me see if he, let me try one more search. Go ahead, Ron. You, you keep going. Yeah. The, but yeah, I just, you know, just to anybody listening, uh, there's a lot of black people that are wondering if this is the right thing. Uh, should I be investigating this, studying this, 
Uh, is it really true? Yes, it's true. No, you're not crazy. The Most High is waking up his, his people for a reason. Uh, you can't gather uh, the house of Israel and the house of Judah or the two sticks if the people are still asleep, don't know who they are. Uh, one, of the, one of the main things of the dry bones regathering and coming back to life with flesh and, and blood and everything and uh, everything you talk about Ezekiel is that Israel will start to understand and wake up to their true heritage and come back to uh, uh, to come back to Torah, come back to the testimony of the gospel of Christ. Just like it says in Revelation. And so this is what's happening with this awakening all over the world. People in Polynesia, Melanesia, Papua New Guinea, West Papua, Australia, India, uh, you know, the Americas, the Caribbean, United Kingdom, people, even Iraq and Iran. You got black people that are descendants of slaves in Iraq and Iran and Saudi Arabia, uh, in Yemen, that and even Eritreans and, and the Habesha people, uh, people are finding out and understanding their true uh, paternal ancestry, what happened to them, who they were before slavery or before they got to a certain country, and it's magnificent because people are coming out and they're, and they're finding out the true history. And at the same time, what that does is that starts to debunk and uncover the lies that uh, people have promoted for so long. Um, with the Jews and, and, and searching for the lost tribes and you know we're from the tribe of Benjamin and Levi and and, uh, and, and and Judah and all this other stuff when it's clear who the descendants of Judah are right. so you can't have a people in Israel claiming to be the tribe of Judah and you got Judah in West Africa you got Judah uh, scattered in the Americas uh, uh, and this is, this is we can prove this me and Benet can prove this hands down uh, and so so yeah, I mean this is this is a lot of amazing and interesting stuff, and it's a it's a fascinating time to be living in when we're seeing all this stuff um, that's happening. So, and uh, and and also we want to let let me tell you this 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 is another sign. We will tell you question everything, question mm -hmm. everything, because there's a lot of deception out here. Question every single thing we say, challenge it. We encourage you to question Ron Dalton. Question him. Yeah, every, everything, everything he teaches, question it. But listen, now, you heard what we said. We're adamant about that. But your pastor will subliminally and manipulatively tell you, how dare you question the man of God? How dare you? No. The book tells well, you, question well, look everything. This, look at, well, look at this, Mike. Mike, before we go, uh, people don't question Eric Mason because they think that he has it all, all, all figured out because he has all these degrees and he's he's pastor of the woke church. He puts up there, oh, the Deuteronomy twenty eight sixty eight was fulfilled in seventy A D with the Romans and all this other stuff, and he uses different uh, historians. But Joseph Flavius talks about uh, the Jews or the Israelites being um, ninety eight thousand. Ninety eight thousand Israelites were sent to the Egyptian mine, and that and that's a certain a scripture or passage that he wrote. It doesn't say anything about the word ships, only I. In Hebrew, only I is the word ships. It doesn't say anything about ships, but, but just, just, just use critical thinking and logic. logic. 98,000 Hebrews were put out, supposedly put on ships after the destruction of the Second Temple and sent to the Egyptian mines. Eritreans and, and Sudanese people can walk from Egypt to Israel and just cross the border. Back in those days, you could walk to Egypt, uh, walk to Israel back and forth. That's what they did in the old days. So a cruise ship can hold about a thousand people comfortable, maybe two thousand max. A cruise ship, carnival cruise ship, ninety-eight thousand, one thousand people on a carnival cruise ship. How did the Romans transport ninety-eight thousand Hebrews from Israel to Egypt? Well, you can walk it. Doesn't make any sense. I mean, did they have a whole line of cruise ships lined up on the Mediterranean coast of Israel? No. How big were the, how big were the ships back in those days? Uh, a slave ship. In the 1600s, can only carry about 100, 150 slaves, maybe 200 at max. So you're looking at 100 to 200 divided by 98,000. Did the Romans have? I mean, it, 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 see, these guys are, are using the books of man, uh, books of man, not going by what the word says, what the scripture says in Deuteronomy 28. They still haven't figured it out, you know, because they don't understand Paleo Hebrew. And 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 the thing uh, again. We're, we're telling you, it's not a sin to question what you're being told. Nope. How are you going to 
that the, what what we did that separates us from everybody else is we we were willing to question the manipulation where like cuz I grew up as a Christian and I, I I don't know the programming is subliminal they subliminally tell you don't question what I'm teaching you they do it subliminally they tell you don't question what I'm teaching you and they make you feel bad for thinking something different most I gave you this brilliant brain to be able to question stuff. Just like, just like, Seek, just like and Christians, you will find. Christians, just like Christians will say, oh, like pastors say, oh, every bone in Jesus' body was broken for you. And he'd be like, where in the, if you don't believe, if you, if you oh, okay, he, he's right. Where in the scripture does it say that every bone in Jesus' body, <laughs> including his, eye, his, his orbital socket, his, his zygomatic arch, where, 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 where did it say all, his, all the bones in his body was broken for us? Where does it say in the scripture? It doesn't say that in the scripture. You know, so they, 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 we as black people, we tend to just believe everything that our pastor tells us. And that's the problem because the pastor's leading us astray. He's and we're, astray and we're, a lot of times. and we're telling you to question us. Start with questioning what we're saying. But make sure you question your pastor. And then watch what he does when you begin to question him. He's going to send you to hell. <laughs> Yeah, they don't like you to ask questions, you know. But the most, but the most high is our is our Abba, is our Father, and, and not not a rabbi or a teacher. They like to have different titles and wear phylacteries, like the Bible says on the hit. You know, the most high is our Father and our teacher and our leader, and, our, and the Holy Spirit guides and leads us and gives us direction. So if you have a relationship with the Most High, with the Father uh, and with Christ, then that, that's all you need. And and if you ask for the spirit of discernment, then you can discern if your pastor is telling the truth or he lies. Right. A lot, of, a lot of pastors are in it for the wrong reason. Right. Well, anyway, man. With that said, we're gonna uh, we're gonna wrap this show up. Ron, did you uh, have anything else you wanted to say? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, um, everybody, we got the the Great Awakening Hebrews to Negroes Mega Conference in Detroit, July the 11th through the 14th. Uh, Pastor Eric Mason is, is invited. Uh, all these people are invited that really that really don't like what we're trying to do. And you can go to www.greathebrewawakening.org uh, to register for the four-day conference, www.greathebrewawakening.org uh, for the four-day event. The first day of the conference uh, kicks off with the, with the sequel, movie premiere, Hebrews to Negroes 2, Revelation, The Age of Awakening. For those of you that seen the first movie, Hebrew Sneakers, Wake Up Black America, uh, this movie is going to be the second. It's going to be the sequel to this movie, so you don't want to miss it. Uh, it's kicking off July the le- July the 11th uh, in Detroit, well, in Royal Oak Landmark Theaters in Detroit. I mean, at Royal Oak, and uh, we got other festivities afterwards. Uh, three more days of, of things, and you guys need to be there. Uh, a lot of Hebrews going to be there. Divine the, the, the Zion Lex, the Benaya, uh Prophetic World, and we got a whole lot of people going to be there. And um, again, last thing, just register if you can. Don't wait till the last minute because we always like to wait till the last minute for everything. And that, that makes it hard for us because, you know, we, we're not millionaires. But anyway, it's www.greathebrewawakening.org. And uh, if you need to get the first movie that I did uh, or find out how to stream it, how to rent it, how to buy it, you can go to www.thenegronetwork.com, www.thenegronetwork.com. All right. So, yeah, that is uh, Ron Dalton, the writer and director of the Hebrews and Negroes book. Um, like I said, we're just addressing the uh, Eric Mason's latest lecture that he did and letting everybody know we got now we have witnesses that, hey, we are reaching out to the brother. Let's let's sit down and have a dialogue, a, a public dialogue, and let's reason these facts out. Like, hey, they, know, did, Mike, like Mike, they did, like they did in the I, Book of Acts. Go ahead, Ron. Mike, I, I will, I will come to the woke church with all my slides and all my material, and I will present in front of his whole church all this proof and truth. But he ain't gonna do that. Oh, no, no, he's not. I've already yeah. taught at different at different churches this truth, but he ain't gonna let me come there with my slides and, and prove, you know, the stuff that I prove. He ain't gonna do it. So, you know, he can, he can. The ball's in his court, like you said. He can come on the spiritual combat show. And if he wants me to, if he wants to invite me to his church to, to teach this stuff, then he can he can do that, and he will open his eyes, and the church will open his eyes too. 
All right, so you heard it there. Um, so definitely, uh, you know, like I said, the we put our hand out. The door is definitely open uh, for us to have a dialogue on the show and bring all this stuff out. Um, you know, in front of you know, in front of the nation to bring clarity. Um, it, <laughs> I'm just I gotta just keep saying it. It's funny how. People like Ron Dalton, uh, Benea, Dr. Howard, like these people never get debates. Like nobody ever calls them out for debates. They, they'll call out some of the silly groups that they can make an example of, but nobody ever want to mess with truly educated, scholar Hebrew. So like I said, it's out there if they, if they want it. Um, I'm going to tell y'all. If your pa if your past watch his moves, you will know them by their fruits. So if you don't see him on this show, you already know what the deal is. There's fear there. Right. They they know what <laughs> they know what the deal is. You know. <laughs> I'm, it's There's just, the combat. <laughs> yeah, you know. But I mean, if like if I'm adamant, like me, I, where my focus is at, what I predominantly teach on on spiritual combat as far as the ministry part of what I do is marriage relationships uh, for men and women who are single how to develop yourself and how to get into a relationship and I will debate anybody or have a discussion with anybody live whatever on that topic on my understanding of it and if you prove me wrong well hey I'm a humble down and admit that so let's see we'll we'll see Time will tell, you know what I'm saying? And you will know them by their fruits. You'll know them by what their actions show you. Uh, anyway, with that said, y'all, I'm Michael Israel. you watching Spiritual Combat. And Shalom. <laughs>